Hello everyone, welcome back. It is Coach Fury and as you can see by the screen we are back with the next episode of our Michigan Let's Play series in the CBGM. The uh, the premier college basketball online sim for um, Draft Day Sports College Basketball 21. And while this is going to come to you guys probably a few days later than the actual schedule in the league, because we're going to be talking a little bit about my recruiting, my strategy, my offers, little bit of considerations on how we're going to pitch we're obviously going to do that on the episode today so because i'm doing that i don't necessarily want that to go out live to everyone at this point in time because obviously hoping to get some recruits so we're just going to dive in talk about it explain maybe a little bit about the direction of travel i've, I've taken at the beginning of recruiting what i've learned along the way and then moving on to what we're going to do now so any of anyone who's, who's sat and watched the uh the last episode we'll, we'll realize that I'm still learning an awful lot about this game in particular at re recruiting level and I'm still definitely not there in terms of really being an expert in terms of how to recruit good players but I mean I, I'm learning a lot and I, I pointed out last time in terms of how to get players interested in you what to look out for how to do the camps the importance of staff all of that so if you, if you want to go back please go back and look at episode three where I talk about that in a lot of detail. But for today, I'm going to purely talk about my recruiting decision so far, talk about the direction we've taken, where we got to, and, and how we're going to go um, for this, for this uh, sim coming up in, I think, a couple of hours' time now. So, to begin with, for Michigan, I maybe got a little bit too ambitious. I mean, you can see my call list now has been reduced a lot since the last um, the last sim and last export but I mean I, I maybe got a little bit too ambitious to begin with I was looking at Dan McRae and thinking oh we had a great shot at him we were in his top 10 everyone was warm you know location was key and we we're pretty close being in Michigan to where he is and thought oh we had a great shot here so I, I put a hard offer into him very early offered him a scholarship got him in watched film went to watch him live been texting him a lot and um, for the first couple of exports really in the league Realised fairly quickly that I just simply couldn't compete with some of the other teams that are on this list here. They are either a higher prestige team, they are, um, or they have a better recruiting staff member than I do at the moment. So my my current predicament really with Michigan is that they're they're a team where their prestige is high. They are they are a good team. They're they're a you know, top twenty five ranked team, but they don't have the prestige of the Kentuckys, the Dukes, the Baylors, etc. And to add an extra flavour to that, we also don't have a very good recruiting coach. So our best recruiting coach is Phil Martelli. And you can see here his recruiting is only 59. And when I go and look at, say, for example, Michigan State, who are not much higher in prestige than us, they've got a five-star recruit already off the bat, who's a 96. So instantly, one of the things I've, I've recognised and, and have learnt through this recruiting period is that if you're going to chase top stars, you've got to have top coaches to support you and you've got to have the prestige to back it up it doesn't really matter necessarily what what their demands are what in terms of what they they're recruiting in front of is particularly with McRae obviously his prestige is, is incredibly high so you know that offer was quickly rescinded on my part after two or three exports I believe when we dropped I think from maybe his sixth position to eight we are now we, we weren't going to get him the other guy that I was chasing heavily up until today was Kurt Linney. And you know, you can see here he's clearly he's a phenomenal player. He's gonna be a one and done guy, probably one of the best small forwards in the nation, and he probably will be coming into college as one of the best small forwards. And you can see his camps support that. Um he you know, and his his actual stats with support that. And we've been hot on him to begin with. We were we were the number one school right out the bat in, in terms of the the start of the league. And we've been hot ever since, ever since we brought him in to, to look at him. However, when you look at some of the other teams that are competing now, you've got Notre Dame, who are got an, an elite recruiter, but North Carolina is the, the one that kind of tipped me over the edge to say, okay, we're not realistically going to get Kurt Linney. So you can see here I've got a scholarship open from the moment. I've kind of left that hanging, but his demands for playing time, conference prestige and school prestige means that we're probably not going to get him, in my opinion. We, 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 we have a fair shot if I was to leave this in here. But for me, I, had to, I have to think about the bigger picture for Michigan, really. In, in, we're not going to be a team, in, 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 in my opinion, where 
we are going to get these one and done guys we're going to be like uh you know a team that's just fantastic for one year a title contender for one year and then we're terrible for two three seasons where we can't recruit and you know we lose out to some of these guys the equivalent of, of kurt linney so basically i'm gonna i'm gonna revoke that risk scholarship my view here is when i look at my team in, in in the roster at the moment we have some some really good young players obviously that we can develop who have some good potential and we have some key seniors obviously going as well um larry beak is is, is going to be be going this this season regardless i would be surprised if, if maybe scotty Orza does stay um and possibly bernie sweet 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 wine will may stay so for me if we were to lose two of those three guys instantly we're going to have a hole to fill and you know we've got guys who have got potential who probably will develop as the season goes on i, I would imagine but for us, you know, for us to have keep having these one and done guys coming through all the time, there's a lot of pressure on my recruiting then to have that happen. So we've pulled that offer, and we're actually going to look at a couple of different guys today. Some who I maybe have not looked at, but from seeing where the recruitment path has been going, now they're a good viable option, and we need to go hard at them now and and really understand what their demands are, what they want, throw them offers, and see what happens. And there's a couple of guys that are backup guys that we might talk about today, we might not talk about today. But key thing is here, we are not going to be going after these, these stars anymore because I don't think we're necessarily going to get someone like McRae and for, for Lini and others' case, whilst we might have a fair shot at them, I, I just don't really want to build my team around that. I need guys who are going to be here four years or so and build my team. And then once I've got to that point, I can then start chasing some of these five-star guys. For Michigan, we need to build a consistently performing franchise, uh, consistently performing program to get that prestige up, to get us competing against some of the best teams in our Big Ten conference, and go from there. So, first guy that we are going to be heavily going after is this man here, Peter Graves. We had him in for uh, uh, recruiting. He looks phenomenal. He's basically a top 10 player at Chicago which is great it's good good if he's performing at some of these camps we are he, he looks really good he's got good defense good shooting he's pretty much good at everything across the board that you'd want from a big man and he's got the height and everything and as you could probably see from earlier we, we do have a bit of a gap at sort of the forward positions uh, for next season really we, we do need to fill in someone and you know assuming Singletary and um, and Johnson don't necessarily develop and, and obviously Keith Daniel going, we, we do need to try and bring someone in there. So we're, gonna, we're going to basically go, go after him. He, he looks like the best prospect we can probably realistically try and poach. So we're going to go straight in. We're going to offer him a, uh, uh, yeah. offer him a scholarship here. And we're going to get a couple of text, bit of text going because I just want to narrow down some of these things here. So I want to find out a little bit about playing time. Okay, he's not necessarily interested. Let's try again. Um, let's see if you want to talk about vacation. It's very important. Okay, it's academics also important to him. Let's just double check that. Okay, so we've not gone very far with him. We've spent a lot of money in texting him now. So we are probably going to go in and we're going to probably pitch him at the uh, academics. I think. And, and see where we go from now. I mean, for Michigan itself, if we go to school in our academics are pretty, pretty good, I believe. If I remember right. Yes, we're in A, so we do have a good, a good pitch there. We can throw at him. So that's going to be our first guy that we're going to pitch, and we're going to pitch the the academics, and so we're going to pay to visit him. So he's been visited. He's been hard offered. If we get him in. I'm I'm confident that will help our rotation next year, and we'll get that 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 qualities sort of front court player in that we, that we do need. The next player that we're going to go after is Rod Wilson. So, probably looking at this and thinking, why, why, Coach Fury, are you going after Rod Wilson? You're cool on him. You haven't hosted him. You've, you've literally had a couple of calls with him, and that's it. Yep, absolutely correct. My view here is that I know Ohio State are hot, but they're not chasing him. They haven't thrown him an offer. They put their offers elsewhere. We might be able to sneak under the radar and grab this guy. He um, is a top 10 player at Chicago, so he's a good prospect. He's going to come in pretty, a pretty good standard, which is what we want. My 
initial plan was to not bring him in, but to actually go after Jamal Grawler. Problem is, is that he had a terrible indie camp. He didn't stand out indie. He didn't stand out Chicago, which to me, from talking to other colleagues across the uh, the CBGM, is a huge red flag that this guy is going to come in massively underdeveloped. So we're not going to go after him. We are going to go after uh, Rod Wilson here and see see if we can sneak him in. So we're going to host him. We are going to give him a watch a bit of film. We're going to give him a text. I'd like to understand a little bit more about. Uh, location, a little bit more about discipline, and a little bit more about this, and playing time. Okay, so that's cool. So we found out a bit more there. So if we go back in, hopefully it all pinged up. So location is key for him. His parents don't have a lot of huge parental control, so we don't necessarily need to worry about that for him. So we're going to basically go in and offer this guy a scholarship. I love his outside shooting, I love his passing and handling. He is going to be a nice player if we can snag him as well. So we're going to go in, we're going to offer, uh, we're also going to pitch location. We'll just double check. So we're going to pitch him location and visit him. So he has our offer. He he has been pitched location. So, I mean, the reason why I looked at Grawler is because I think I may have mentioned it on a couple of episodes ago is that we, we don't have an actual decent point guard. We just, we just don't have one. And um, we have Shelton who pretty borderline average yeah Geeson obviously can't play there he's, he's 28 ball handling is just terrible uh, Beak obviously can't also can't you know we, we haven't got anyone who's really got any ability there I mean Iacona is probably the only guy outside of um, Shelton who can actually really hand the ball for us probably in my, in my opinion so I did heavily look at point guards hence why we looked at McRae we looked at others we looked at Burris you know, we just realistically don't have a chance for some of these guys. So I was then looking at the backup point guards and looked at Grawler, as I said, um, Grawler, and, and, and he basically flopped, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm not convinced any of the other point guards that realistically we can get are actually going to be any better than than, um, than what we currently have. So because of that, we'll have to roll that probably over to next season and we'll look at point guards again. And to be honest with you, uh, Rod Wilson, C handling, he might be okay. He might be okay to play a bit point guard i'm just i'm just look, he just looks like a pretty good all-round player to me to be honest so that's why we're going after him as well so it means that also that if um if the likes of um Osler actually does decide to declare this year i mean we can we can shift around the backcourt a bit more i know he's six foot he wouldn't be able to play a small forward but i you know we've got um Iacona at six one that's the backcourt sorted but it means that possibly we, we can rotate round, maybe play a little bit more small ball, possibly. I mean, just shooting guards and wings, you can tend to flex around a little bit, even at size at college level, in my opinion. So we'll see how that goes. So that moves us on to other guys that we need to look at. So there was one other point guard. Apologies for what I said earlier. There's one other point guard that is interesting, and that is Jarvis Jensen. So we're going to watch some film with him, we're going to host him, we're going to drop him a quick text and see how he feels about location, and then we we'll probably will pitch to him. So that's very important. Location is very important for him, which is interesting. So we're, we're going to probably visit him. Reason why, again, he's a top 25 guy at Chicago. His passing wasn't great, um, so he's, that's what basically meant that I haven't made him an, a formal scholarship offer. But I'm happy to try and pitch to him, get his interest in, and then throw him an offer and see what happens. So we're going to pitch him location. We're going to visit him and see how that goes as well. And then that leaves us with one other visit that we've got to line up. And my final visit, really, is, is going to go to a guy... Well, uh, between two guys we're debating, I'm debating, to be honest with you, and we'll just talk through them. One is Colin Brown, who we are number one on. He is um, a top 25 guy at, at Chicago. He's got obviously a lot of interest. His location is pretty key. Um, he's pretty interesting actually. Hmm.
Hmm, I'm just debating whether we go for Rod Wilson or whether we go for Colin Brown. I think we go for Colin Brown, if I'm honest. I think we have a great shot at Colin Brown when we do Rod Wilson. Colin Brown looks like he's a better player. He's a bit bigger, actually. So I think we will we will go after Colin Brown. We'll offer him a scholarship, and um, we will obviously visit him. We'll watch some of his film. That's important. Okay, so location again. So we will uh, pitch. Uh, where is he? Colin Brown. We will pitch you location, and we'll offer you a scholarship. I think that's probably the right decision to go. Brown and, and Graves, and then we've got Wilson as the backup, Jensen as the backup, and uh, there is one other guy I'm considering in terms of back, in terms of the front court. Sorry, but we'll probably talk about him another time. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, we'll obviously come back probably post offers, post reaction, see if we get anyone locked up early, and then we'll probably discuss about you know if there's other options. But they're they're the kind of four guys I'm looking at really. One front court player where we need to fill a gap, and then you know possibly a back court guard type player who can do a bit of everything really, and um, he's shown some good signs. And um, yeah, that's where we're going to go. We'll like I said, this episode will be a couple of days after the actual uh, announcements in terms of pitching and, and offers etc. And um, we'll see how how we perform then, and we'll probably do a recap, see if we've landed anyone. If we have, fantastic. If not. We could be panicking and we could be looking at other guys. But uh, that's that's how state of play for Michigan. We're going to try and build this program through some solid players um, who are four-year guys, hopefully. And then we'll start chasing some of these five-star five guys as and when we start to build up the program, start to build on a strategy of, of, uh, of some solid, solid you know, eight-man rotation. And then that five-star player will be, be that little icing on the top, hopefully, to take us to a, a contender level from hopefully being a very good performer um, in, in, the, uh, in the conference itself. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying the episodes and I hope you're enjoying following along with Michigan and just getting a little bit of insight into some of the, the thoughts as to what we've been doing for recruiting. Like I said, I've learned a huge amount just in this one season, this one um, recruiting period that's certainly going to help me going forward into next season. I mean, I had to change a lot of tacks and things, but it's been been really interesting. I've I've learned so much about this from versus just sitting there and playing a single player, just chatting to people in the league. And if you are, um, you know, you are enjoying this game and you've got it and you want to join the CBGM, uh, the link is just below in the description. Grab on Discord. There's loads of teams available. I think there's about eighty six GMs, ADs at, at this moment in time. So there's plenty of space available. There's plenty of good teams still available as well. So jump on in and and, and join the action. And, you know, this could be you got you next season, seeing who you're recruiting for one of your major teams. And, you know, you could be in despair or you could be anxious, excited of seeing what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come back next time and see how, how we've got on with our, our recruiting for Michigan.